forward port. They'll also need a go at that time to move inside the keep out sphere. That's a invisible line with a 200 meter radius around the International Space Station. They'll need to make sure Dragon is four orbits safe or about six hours safe. If any of its thrusters were to fail for some reason, meaning it wouldn't move inside the keep out sphere during that time period. And after we reach waypoint one, our next destination will be waypoint two, only 20 meters away from the International Space Station and the very last hold point before we move on in. And after waypoint two, there will be a go, no go pull before docking begins. Uh, but that should happen very shortly after we reach waypoint two and then docking uh, should occur just a few minutes after that. Yeah, it'll take about five minutes to get from that 20 meter hold point waypoint two into docking. And the first call we'll look here just before docking is chop crew hands off point, uh, meaning that they should not execute any maneuvers for a dragon. Pretty much exactly <laughs> means exactly what it sounds like. Hands off. Um, and then we'll look for soft capture. Soft capture call means that the uh, soft capture ring has come in contact with the international docking adapter. That ring will retract, bring crew dragon in, and then we will wait for 12 hooks to drive to give us the hard capture. And once docking is complete, uh, it will take a little bit for um, the A-pass hatch to open and Dragon hatch to open, but open. Uh, but that should occur, you know, about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, hour and a half after docking has completed. So there are a few um, checks that they do have to still do after docking is complete and confirmed. Uh, but shortly after that, they'll be able to uh, enter the station. Yeah, those leak checks ever important when we are Very talking important. about the vacuum <laughs> of space. So uh, those will occur during the time that Crew Dragon is docked. The crew will also get an opportunity to doff or take off their suits, uh, get into those more comfortable clothes again before they float into their new home for the next six months. But as you just heard, we had a good approach initiation mid-course maneuver burn, putting us on proper trajectory to reach waypoint zero, the 400 meter point away from the International Space Station. And the next call coming up, we will be listening for a go, no go for waypoint zero in about five minutes. And we are just about a kilometer away from the International Space Station. So getting closer and closer. It's very slow and steady, but almost there.
Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. The ground is go for approach zero. We will be enabling the maneuver shortly. Expected maneuver start time is 0309 UTC. Reminder that Dragon will nominally continue approach through waypoint one toward waypoint two without stopping at waypoint one. Okay, Dragon copy 0309. You will be enabling the approach to zero shortly and it will not stop. And we see the approach allowed now. Good readback. Station Houston, expect to start monitoring Dragon in approximately 25 minutes. Copy, 25 minutes, thank you. Been getting some really incredible views as Dragon gets closer and closer to the International Space Station. Just a minute ago, we did see a live view from Dragon looking at the space station. Uh, very, it, it was a little bright because of the sun. There it is right there on your right hand screen, the International Space Station. You could see how close they are, almost there. On your left hand screen is the station looking back at Dragon. We heard a few calls there. Uh, the crew received the go from both the team here in Hawthorne and the team in Mission Control Houston to proceed to waypoint zero. And if everything checks out, they will also move through waypoint zero, which is 400 meters below station. They'll pass through waypoint one as well and head on to waypoint two. And waypoint two is 20 meters away from the space station. So we expect to reach waypoint zero about nine minutes from now. That's 7.09 p.m. Pacific time. So standing by, awaiting for them to reach that waypoint. But we are getting really close now. We could be about an hour away from docking. Yeah, we're just about 600 meters away uh, from the station right now. And just about eight minutes from that uh, go, no go for waypoint one. Just a reminder that this is all autonomous. Dragon is completely flying on its own. Wow, look at that view on the left hand side. You can actually make out the nose cone uh, on top of Dragon there. <laughs> Wow, amazing views. Obviously, the space station is in an orbital nighttime, and um, soon, in just the next few minutes, we should see them crossing that Terminator line into orbital daytime. But they're looking down right now, space station 262 statute miles over Earth, as space station and Dragon fly over Tanzania. Such a cool view, and as a reminder, we do have the nose cone still attached to Dragon on this version of Dragon, whereas previously our, our cargo Dragon, uh, we actually deployed that nose cone. So now that we keep the nose cone attached, and this helps with uh, reusability efforts so that we don't have to make a new one, don't have to install a new one when uh, Dragon returns. As we saw earlier, the crew is inside Crew Dragon, suited up in their seats, strapped in, and they will be arriving at waypoint zero in it looks like about seven minutes. Just such a cool view of Dragon from the station looking down uh, as it's passing over Earth. 
they are moving pretty quickly. Uh, now that you could see Dragon uh, in view, you can see how fast it is moving against uh, the background of Earth there. And Dragon is approaching station now at half a meter per second. It's a bit slower than we were seeing earlier, but that's because we are so much closer to station now. We have to make every single maneuver very fine-tuned, very deliberate. You'll start to see things get brighter, as we mentioned, as Space Station and Crew Dragon enter an orbital daytime. You'll be able to see a little bit of the ocean below, and then eventually, uh, in just a few minutes, both the vehicles will be flying over Madagascar. Only about five, four minutes away now from uh, the arrival at Waypoint Zero, 400 meters away from the International Space Station. And we're just under 500 meters away, so once we get to Waypoint Zero, we will be 400 meters away. Basically, we'll just be passing through Waypoint Zero, through that uh, 400 meter point, and going uh, continuing on. The next hold point would be waypoint one. That is 220 meters away. And they'll need to go to move inside the keep out sphere, a 200 meter radius, an invisible line around the International Space Station. This is the same for every vehicle that arrives and departs the station. We make sure that it is a go to move inside. And this means if Dragon were to lose control of its thrusters for some reason, it would be four orbit safe or six hours before it crossed into that 200 meter radius, the keep out sphere. So if everything looks good, Crew Dragon can move through waypoint one and up to waypoint two, which will put us only 20 meters away from the International Space Station. Another view from Crew Dragon looking at its future destination, its future home for the next six months, the International Space Station, even becoming more and more clearly defined as they approach it, as we said earlier, at about half a meter per second. You can see it shining brightly with the sun uh, beaming off of the International Space Station. And our astronauts inside, as we mentioned, suited up, strapped in, monitoring but not controlling the vehicle. Crew Dragon continues to fly autonomously. And that is Madagascar that both vehicles are flying over right now. Just as a reminder, the crew is suited up and they did perform leak checks just as they did when they got suited up and ingressed the vehicle uh, prior to liftoff yesterday. And just a little look back at what brought us to this point, if you're just joining us, Crew Dragon lifted off yesterday on a Falcon 9 rocket at 7.27 p.m. Eastern Time from Kennedy Space Center, beginning their journey to the International Space Station. They completed their first burn last night, the phase burn, and then got a good night's sleep. Uh, they had a phase adjust burn this morning added in there by Dragon's computers to make sure it was on the right trajectory to the space station and then had the boost burn at 8.22 a.m. Pacific time. About 45 minutes later, we saw the closed co-elliptic burn. And that maintained an orbit roughly 10 kilometers below station for Dragon. We had a short out-of-plane burn. Another one added in by the Dragon CPU, the computer system. We moved on to the transfer burn and then the final co-elliptic burn. Those rounded out our five major burns as part of the rendezvous phase for Crew Dragon. Once we reached the 30 meter, 30 kilometer distance from station, we were out of that rendezvous point and then moved into the approach phase. That puts us at the approach out of plane burn, another short burn that the Dragon computers executed. 
We moved into approach and docking, and we saw that approach initiation burn take place at 6.22 p.m. Pacific time. We also had a short mid-course maneuver. And now we're just under a minute to waypoint zero. Looks like the station is zooming in on Dragon. Now you can really clearly see Dragon from the station. That looks amazing. Yeah, you can see that nose cone is open, just like yeah. you mentioned. And that nose cone protects uh, the forward bulkhead thrusters. It also protects the, uh, the hatch that the astronauts will float through once they are attached to the International Space Station. This is not the same hatch they entered yesterday when it was no. on the launch pad. <laughs> they won't, uh, that hatch won't be open again until they splash down about six months from now. Yeah, and that nose cone only protects um, the GNC uh, just through a scent, but in the vacuum of space, we don't need that protection. So we have it deployed so that uh, we can expose the GNC so that it can navigate. Crew waiting patiently. Less than a quarter of a mile away from the International Space Station now. Amazing that we're getting these views inside the cabin during these dynamic operations. It's really cool to see that side-by-side -side crew inside of the vehicle and then the shot of the Dragon capsule so close to the International Space Station. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Approach zero has started and the trajectory has converged on waypoint one. Expect arrival at waypoint one at 0334 UTC. Copy 0334 UTC, arrival at waypoint one, good burn, and we've converged on waypoint one. So we've now passed waypoint zero. We're just a little under 24 minutes away from waypoint one, which means we are inside of that 400 meters from station. As we mentioned, uh, we have passed waypoint zero. They gave us a time of 7.34 p.m. Pacific that we should reach waypoint one, but we do not have to hold there. That uh, waypoint one is approximately 220 meters away from the station and Dragon would be directly in front of the node two forward port, its docking port. And if everything checks out, we can move through waypoint one, we'll have to have the go to move inside the keep out sphere, a 200 meter invisible line uh, radius around the International Space Station. And that go confirms that uh, if we were to lose control of Dragon's thrusters for any reason, we would be four orbits or about six hours safe from moving inside that keep out sphere. So we'll need that go uh, for us to pass through waypoint one. And then the next stop would be waypoint two, about 20 meters from station.
Again, we're uh, about 15 minutes or so away from approaching waypoint one. Waypoint one will bring us about 220 meters from the International Space Station. And we don't have to hold there. Um, if we get the go, we can continue to waypoint two, which will bring us 20 meters. Once we reach waypoint two, we will pause there. Um, as we mentioned, the crew is inside. They're seated up. They won't have to push any buttons or fire any thrusters. Dragon is doing this all on its own. It's completely autonomous, meaning the crew is just monitoring when you see them looking at their screens. Uh, and waypoint two, as you mentioned, is 20 meters away from the International Space Station. Once we reach that point, it'll take us about five minutes until we'll be looking for that soft capture time.
check it out. We've got views of Crew Dragon continuing its approach to the International Space Station. If you just look to the left of the Canada arm there, you can see it uh, continuing its way. It just recently made it through waypoint zero, that 400 and meters away or below the station. And uh, we are next going to move through waypoint one. That's 220 meters away directly in front of the docking port, the Node 2 forward port. And that's also where Dragon docked during Demo 1 and Demo 2. We'll be looking for the go to move inside the keep out sphere, a 200 meter radius. It's an invisible line around the station. It's uh, something that helps our flight controllers monitor vehicles as they approach and even depart the International Space Station. Such a cool view. Seeing Dragon with the Canada arm up from the station and Earth in the background. And uh, we used to use the Canada arm to capture Dragon uh, before it was uh, configured into, into this design, this new Crew Dragon design, and it docks autonomously. But for a lot of our visiting vehicles, we have to use the Canada arm too. The astronauts will reach out and grapple a spacecraft or grasp it once it gets close enough and then flight controllers on the ground will berth it or attach it to the port on the International Space Station. But Dragon is fully autonomous. The astronauts are strapped in their seats, monitoring the mission, awaiting the milestones as we uh, move through waypoint one. Should be coming up in just a couple of minutes and continue our approach to waypoint two, 20 meters away from the space station and that last checkpoint before we move in for docking. Station on Space Ground 2, I'm in 1.104, Crew Dragon Approach and Retreat Monitoring. Houston copies, and we were ready for that as well. We are about 10 minutes away from waypoint one. Again, that is where Dragon will swing up and out in front of the station. And that'll bring us about 220 meters away from station, uh, which will bring us to what we call the docking access, which essentially means that we'll be right in front of the docking port. And we, we don't have to hold at waypoint one. Uh, as long as we get that clear to move inside the keep out sphere, that 200 and meter, 200 meter radius around the International Space Station, it's invisible, helps us monitor the arrival and departure of visiting vehicles. And this awesome view over the shoulder of our commander and pilot, Mike Hawkins and Victor Glover, just monitoring the mission. Dragon is flying autonomously. 
We are about 300 meters away. Closing in on just about one meter per second. So just about 80 meters to go until waypoint one. Amazing view of the International Space Station. That's from the cameras aboard Crew Dragon. Both getting a good look at each other. <laughs> kind of cool to see them both looking at each other as they approach each other. <laughs> Absolutely. And the crew on board also monitoring on their three display panels there in front of them. This is all autonomous, so they really don't have to do much except for enjoy the ride. Um, but they do get to watch on those display panels uh, where they're at during this approach here. You can also see the International Space Station on that far right and the far left panel. Uh, so they're getting really the same view that we are right here. I'm sure they're pretty excited about making it to their new home in space. But uh, once they reach waypoint one, as we mentioned, they don't have to stop. That'll be that 220 meter point. They'll move inside the keep out sphere at 200 meters. And then the next stop will be waypoint two. Crew will be 20 meters away from the International Space Station. Dragon will focus on aligning its docking system with the International Docking Adapter based on the attitude of the station. And it'll be about five minutes from that waypoint to the 20 meter spot until contact and capture. We'll be looking for that CHOP call, stands for crew hands off point two meters before contact. And this means uh, the crew is not commanding the vehicle. They haven't been at this time, but uh, the vehicle can still have an abort at that time. However, it will not. Two. I've got good RPOP data on SSC 17. SSC 4 says RPOP is not receiving Dragon 2 data from PCS. Is that expected? Copy that, Kata. And Kate, we can go ahead and fix that by cycling it from the ground, or you can perform that task on the SSC, whichever is your preference. I'll let you guys do that, thanks. Copy, we're putting in work now. Astronaut Kate Rubens, who's on the International Space Station, currently the only American on the International Space Station. Uh, she is joined by her two Russian cosmonaut friends. Uh, that is Sergei Ryzikov and Sergei Kutsverchkov. They'll be welcoming four new crew members to the orbiting laboratory. But she is monitoring the approach of Crew Dragon. She's also not commanding the approach. And as we mentioned, she won't be using the Canada Arm 2 to reach out and grapple the vehicle. But she uh, was working to get some data, and the ground team is going to uh, recycle that data for her or restart that for her. As we were mentioning, we were discussing CHOP, the crew hands-off point. The vehicle knows if it should abort, so at that point, the crew would not be commanding anything. However, everything's still looking healthy on Dragon and on the International Space Station. And this view that you're seeing here is from the station, from the Node 2 docking port that Dragon is currently approaching. This is really our first view of both of them in the same picture, so it gives you a good perspective on how close they're getting to each other. Yeah, you can see in that left-hand bottom corner, that is the station, and that white dot on your right, on the right side of your screen is Dragon, slowly approaching. We're just under five minutes away from waypoint one. We're under 280 meters away from the station. A little more of what we can look for once we do get that go to move past waypoint two, the 20 meter point. Now, of course, we're gonna reach waypoint one first, so we have a couple of steps before this, but uh, we will take about five minutes to get in toward the station from waypoint two. And after that five minutes, we hear the chop call, and we will be looking for soft capture first. Uh, there are also rotary spring dampers that will soften the contact 
from Crew Dragon uh, to the International Space Station and that soft capture ring will then begin retracting. It'll retract until sensors indicate it's time for these hooks to drive and create a hard capture that will firmly secure Dragon to station. The hook driving can take about five minutes and the hard mate of Dragon to station can take about three minutes. That means a full seal will be achieved with 12 hard capture hooks. So station on two, I see good RPOP data on SC4, thanks. Copy, Kate, thanks. We are just about 30 minutes or so from docking with currently Dragon approaching waypoint one. Waypoint one is approximately 220 meters away from station. And you heard Kate Rubens who is monitoring this, uh, this mission and the arrival of Crew Dragon. She discussed, uh, she used the term RPOP, that stands for Rendezvous and Proximity Ops uh, Program. And so that is giving her insight into Dragon's position and uh, how it's moving in toward the International Space Station. She'll have some work to do once Dragon arrives, but not until it gets there. Uh, but once Dragon arrives, the Node 2 hatch where they are docking is currently closed on the station side. Dragon SpaceX on the Big Loop. Approach 1 and soft capture ring extension will begin shortly. Dragon will continue approach to waypoint 2. Okay, hey, Dragon copies. Uh, soft capture ring will start here in approach 1. crystal clear view of Dragon as they get the words that everything is still looking good with the systems and they will be moving through waypoint one to waypoint two and that they can expect that soft capture ring we were discussing to extend, begin preparing them for docking. We're about 240 meters away, so we're just about a minute away from passing through waypoint one. And we're so close that you could see the forward bulkhead thrusters on Dragon there. It's basically those four uh, kind of circles that you see uh, in the ring uh, where the nose cone uh, is opened on the top of Dragon there. Dragon continuing its slow and steady approach to the International Space Station. Every single maneuver very deliberate when we have two vehicles this close in space about 226 meters away. Again, what you're seeing on your screen, on your left-hand screen, is the view from the International Space Station looking at Dragon on your right-hand screen. That is a camera view. Dragon, SpaceX on the Big Loop. Expect reconfiguration of the C2V2 return link shortly. And we have passed waypoint one dragon now about 213 meters away from the International Space Station. We also just heard the core uh, speaking with Crew Dragon to expect a reconfiguration of C2V2, that stands for Common Communications for Visiting Vehicles. 
It establishes bi-directional communications between Crew Dragon and the International Space Station. Now we pass through waypoint one, so we're about 10 minutes away from waypoint two. Once we approach waypoint two, then we will do a go no go pull for docking. So we're again around uh, 30 minutes away from docking here, uh, depending on the timeline, uh, how uh, when we are up, uh, reach each one of these points. But we're on our way to waypoint two, which will bring us about 20 meters in front of the space station. And we moved right through waypoint one, right through the keep out sphere, that 200 meter uh, invisible line around the International Space Station that helps flight controllers monitor visiting spacecraft. But we will have to hold at waypoint two, that 20 meter mark. They'll conduct their final checks, repair for arrival at the International Space Station. A very clear view from Crew Dragon. That looks incredible. <laughs> Again, this is a view looking at Dragon from station from the Node 2 forward port that Dragon will be docking to today. Sensational Space Ground 2 in step 2 of 1.104. I've just commanded. On RPOP, reference frame to destination docking port, and I see RPOP not receiving Dragon 2 data. Copy all, Kate, we're checking. Flight teams in Mission Control Houston continuing to check that RPOP rendezvous proximity operations program. In station Houston 2, we're going to reset RPOP one more time before you see if that works. They're resetting some of that data for Kate Rubens. A reminder, she is not commanding uh, any part of Dragon's arrival. She is monitoring it, though, and so looking for some of that data in that program. Again, we are on our way to waypoint two, which will be 20 meters away from the station. Once we reach waypoint two, the vehicle will focus on aligning its docking system with a docking adapter, so preparing for docking. Uh, and there will be a go no go pull prior to initiating that soft capture approach. Here's that same view we were looking at earlier, and you can see even how much closer Crew Dragon has gotten in just the short time since we last received it, having moved through Waypoint 1 since that time period. A little bit more about what Kate Rubens will be doing once Crew Dragon docks. Uh, as we mentioned, the Node 2 hatch is closed during the docking, the station side Node 2 hatch. Kate Rubens will check for a leak and then open it for access to the pressurized mating adapter 2. She'll also manually pressurize the vestibule. That's the area between the A-pass hatch, which is on the station side, and the crew dragon hatch. The A-pass hatch is what is currently exposed to the vacuum of space. It also has a docking target on it that allows Dragon to align itself with the port. Once that pressurization is complete, Kate Rubens will be able to open the A-pass hatch to let some air in. It's a slow process. She'll be opening a valve specifically on the A-pass hatch to let that air in. 
and we'll hold for thermal stabilization before we uh, do some leak checks in the vestibule. We want to make sure that there aren't any fluctuating temperatures that are giving us misleading signals on what the pressure is in the vestibule. We'll conduct the leak check for that space between those two hatches. In the meantime, the crew is doffing and drying and stowing their suits during that thermal stabilization and leak check. They're stowing their equipment. Kate will open the A-pass hatch and remove the docking target. And almost two hours post-docking, these, these checks are taking place during that time. We will look for Dragon's hatch to be opened. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. C2V2 link reconfiguration is complete. The soft capture ring extension is also complete. We are planning to hold momentarily at waypoint two. At that point, we will be asking for your input on lighting conditions and your go to proceed. Do remember that your visors are not required to be down until our final approach. Okay, Dragon copies all, and uh, we'll be holding momentarily at waypoint two, and we will uh, give you a good lighting check at that point. So as you heard, we are on our way to waypoint two, which will be 20 meters away from station, and we will hold and do some checks, do a go, no go hole to ensure that we are okay to approach for docking. And we did hear confirmation that the soft capture ring is extended and ready for that docking. A few minutes ago, we heard them discussing C2V2, common communications for visiting vehicles. They said they would reconfigure that system and just got good confirmation that it has been reconfigured. That's those bi-directional communications between station and crew Dragon. Station Houston on two for Kate. We're still troubleshooting uh, the RPOP issue you're having, so we're coming on board on SSC 17 and we'll try to fix that. All right, you are welcome to SSC 17 and also SSC 4, the main RPOP computer. Copy all, we'll get it working. Mission Control Houston checking back in with Kate Rubens aboard the station who is working to monitor Crew Dragon's arrival. As we mentioned, she is not uh, commanding anything that Crew Dragon is doing and neither are the crew themselves. This is completely autonomous, but she is trying to monitor some of that data and so uh, team members in Mission Control Houston are going to try and reconfigure the RPOP system rendezvous and proximity operations program from the ground. You can see on your screen, again, this is a view from station from the Node 2 port that Dragon will be docking to. You can see the sunlight hitting Dragon as it gets closer and closer. It's starting to get a little bit darker outside as well. That's because the International Space Station and Crew Dragon are approaching an orbital nighttime. They are in daylight for 45 minutes and nighttime for 45 minutes, circling the globe every 90 minutes. They're currently flying 260 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean.
looking at a live view of Mission Control Hawthorne here at SpaceX headquarters in California. And uh, if you noticed, we have lost video temporarily of Crew Dragon as it's approaching the International Space Station, but that's really no surprise to us. It's something called a TDRS handover, tracking data and relay satellite system. Uh, teams on the ground are able to track when the space station and Crew Dragon will be moving in and out of these handover periods. And we expect to regain video communications with the space station very shortly. In the meantime, it continues, uh, Crew Dragon continues its approach to Waypoint 2. And we have those views back already. As you mentioned, Jesse, you can really see those four forward bulkhead thr thrusters the closer we get. Oh, wow, and you can really see the detail on the International Space Station with how close we are. We're approaching Waypoint 2, which will be 20 meters in front of the station. That's why you could see it so close up in that last view. Azarim. Station Houston on Space Ground 2 for Kate. Again, too. All right, Kate, SSC 17 is back up and running for you. We're working on four now. In addition, let us know when your review is complete and you are ready for docking. And I saw SSC working is giving me good range and range rate. Uh, now I've got another, our pop is not receiving Dragon 2 data from PCS message on 17. Copy that, Kate. We'll take a look. Thanks for the extra info. And we've now reached waypoint two, so we are holding this position. Going to do so and I do have a good uh, Dragon Docking System view on SSC 17 for the Dragon Docking Streaming Monitor, and I have a good out of the window view, so I am comfortable and my review is complete. Copy all, thank you. Great news from Kate Rubens. She has the data she's looking for and a great view of Crew Dragon out the window as well. So she's given her go for them to depart Waypoint 2 and move into the International Space Station. As a reminder, we moved directly through Waypoint 1, which put us directly in front of the docking port. You can see it right here. That's the Node 2 forward port where Dragon docked during Demo 1 and Demo 2. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. The ground is go for approach two. At this point, please confirm that the lighting conditions are acceptable to proceed and let us know if you are go for approach two and docking. Okay, SpaceX, uh, this is Dragon on the big loop. Uh, so the lighting is actually getting worse. We do have a view of the IDA, but we do not have a view of the docking target. In Dragon SpaceX, we copy we are six minutes from sunset. Would you like to hold for those six minutes or do you feel comfortable proceeding? SpaceX from Dragon, uh, we'll go ahead and hold for those six minutes if we can. We copy hold. Crew Dragon crew has opted to hold at Waypoint 2 for the time being so they can get some better views of the, uh, the docking port, the docking target on that APAS hatch we were discussing that's on the International Space Station. So they can hold here, and that will give them the opportunity for Sunset to uh, come over both the International Space Station and Crew Dragon. There won't be any odd shadows, and they should have better visibility. Of course, the crew themselves are not making this maneuver in toward the International Space Station. It is autonomous. Crew Dragon will be doing it by itself, but we want the crew to be able to see the docking target so that they can properly monitor uh, as the vehicle continues to make its approach to Node 2. And the ground is go for docking. 
but we are just waiting for us to get a little bit more light so that Dragon can actually see where it is going to autonomously dock, uh, see the target on uh, node two as it approaches so it can make that soft capture accurately. We're in another one of those satellite handovers we just discussed as well. We should get video communications. Oh, right there. Coming back, and uh, as we mentioned, Dragon is holding at waypoint two. That's 20 meters away from the International Space Station. They are holding until we reach sunset, an orbital nighttime for the spacecraft. Once that happens, they will uh, proceed in toward node two. It should take about five minutes. And as a reminder, waypoint two is about 20 meters away from station. We are on the docking access and Dragon will be aligning itself with that docking port. We're just holding for some sunlight. This hold continuing for another few minutes. Uh, the space station has crossed the Terminator line, the difference in day and nighttime on Earth. They are east of Hawaii right now in the Pacific Ocean, and they are waiting for the sun to set on orbit. Crew Dragon will be able to use its infrared camera to spot that docking target on the A-pass hatch on node two, and then they'll be able to proceed leaving waypoint two making their five minute journey approximately to docking and i should correct what i mentioned earlier uh, they're waiting for the sun to go down so that they don't have any shadows so that dragon can uh, actually see clearly and locate uh, align itself with that docking port As a reminder, we had a confirmation that the soft capture ring extended. That'll be the first part of capture, the soft capture ring. There are also rotary spring dampers that will soften the contact once Dragon's soft capture ring comes in contact with the International Space Station. And then the ring will retract until sensors indicate it'll be time for hooks to drive. We're looking for 12 hooks, two different gangs of six, to firmly secure Dragon to the International Space Station. That entire process, from contact to hard capture, can take about 13 minutes. We'll be standing by the entire time to make sure all of that goes smoothly, but everything looking good right now for Crew Dragon, still holding about 20 meters away from the International Space Station. And it looks like we might be about a minute away from sunset. So we should be hearing that call that they're ready to proceed. Again, there's no rush. And there's also no need for the crew to fly Dragon. This is all happening autonomously. Just a few more seconds until sunset. And you can see it did get quite a bit darker. And that flash on the Node 2 docking port coming from Crew Dragon.
Do you like the crew to be able to see this docking even though it's autonomous? That helps them monitor where they're at and take control if need be. However, all of Dragon Systems looking good. And we're just standing by for that departure from waypoint two, 20 meters away from the International Space Station. We are currently go on the ground for docking, but we are waiting for the crew to confirm if they are ready. We are waiting for the crew to confirm. Uh, from Dragon on the big loop. Uh, looks to us like uh, we've gone through sunset and we have, we'll get the lights strobing. We can see the target. And so we are going to proceed by zero down. Copy, you are go to proceed and visors are down. That's great to hear. We will be commanding the resume shortly. And as a reminder, once Dragon is inside the crew hands off point, retreat and breakout are not permitted. And copies all. Station copies all, I'm ready. We've got confirmation that we have go from the crew. So they will be starting this procedure shortly. We'll start approaching that docking adapter that you see on your screen. Once we get close enough, we will do a soft capture, followed by the insertion of the pins for the hard capture. We also heard the core mentioned uh, once that we reach the crew hands off point that's the chop call we'll hear retreat and breakout are not permitted and that would be from the crew the vehicle can still abort if necessary but as we said everything continuing to look good for crew dragon ready to depart waypoint two and the final approach has begun crew dragon moving in toward the International Docking Adapter on Node 2. Kate Rubin standing by on the International Space Station monitoring their approach. And this should only take approximately five minutes. It's not too long. Their arrival at the International Space Station today will be coming about 27 and a half hours since their liftoff last night at 7.27 p.m. Eastern Time from Kennedy Space Center in Florida aboard a Falcon 9 rocket. We are now about 15 meters away, just about three minutes from docking. Very slow, deliberate, steady movements for Crew Dragon making its way to the International Space Station. We'll be looking for soft capture first with the soft capture ring already extended. Once we have soft capture, the ring will retract and bring us into a hard capture. That should take about 13 minutes for that entire process, firmly securing us to the International Space Station. And then we'll move into leak checks. And SpaceX from Dragon on the big loop, we show 10 meters. We've got good lighting, good visuals. Great to hear, we see 10 meters as well. Even though it looks very slow right now, both Dragon and the International Space Station are traveling about 17,500 miles an hour over Earth right now, both about 262 statute miles over the planet. We 
partner just a few moments ago, too, that the crew had reached 10 meters away from the International Space Station, so already halfway there from Waypoint 2. But only about a little over a minute from docking. You can see on those display panels the crew watching as they approach that node port two. And what you could see directly in the center of the docking adapter, that is the A-pass hatch. Um, once we do do a hard capture um, and do leak checks, that will be the first hatch that will open, followed by the dragon hatch. If you look closely in the center at the very bottom, there was CHOP, crew hands off point, standing by for contact. Dragon SpaceX, soft capture confirmed. Dragon copies, and we see the same. As you heard that call out, soft capture is now complete. Next will be hard capture. This is where the pins will insert themselves into that docking adapter and create a hard lock. And we had that soft capture at 8.01 p.m. Pacific time, 11.01 p.m. Eastern time. Crew Dragon and the International Space Station flying 262 statute miles over Idaho. Dragon SpaceX, soft capture ring retraction in progress. That call confirming just what we're looking to hear. The soft capture ring is retracting. We're looking for sensors to indicate it'll be time for hooks to drive, create that firm hold on Crew Dragon. So this can take several minutes, maybe about 10 to 13 minutes. Uh, but slow and steady wins the race. Crew Dragon is now at the International Space Station. This view over the shoulder of our commander and our pilot, Mike Hopkins and Victor Glover. They are watching this all unfold via these three displays. Got some folks here watching as we confirm that soft capture there. Everybody's pretty excited. I'm getting really excited. I can't <laughs> wait. They're almost done. This is the home stretch. So once again, we had contact soft capture confirmed at the International Space Station for Crew Dragon at 8.01 p.m. Pacific Time, 11.01 p.m. Eastern Time. Both vehicles were flying 262 statute miles over Idaho. We're now in the soft capture ring retract period. We'll be looking for uh, that ring to retract fully. The sensors will indicate that we are ready to firmly connect with the International Space Station. That's called the hard capture. Um, and that means it'll be time after that to begin league checks, suit doffing or taking off their suits for the crew, eventually hatch opening. So all those steps might take a couple of hours, um, but we will be here for their first 
I can't say steps inside the space station for their first <laughs> floats inside the space station. <laughs> Station and Bucky complete sensor one and two are off. OFS timer has been started. Dragon SpaceX ring retraction complete. Docking sequence is holding for MCS reconfiguration. Okay, Dragon copies all, and we are opening our visors at this time. the soft capture ring retract is complete and MCS stands for motion control system we are handing off from the Russian thrusters to the US gyroscopes the other voice you heard was that of NASA astronaut Kate Rubens monitoring the arrival of her four new crewmates inside crew dragon everything's still going smoothly currently awaiting that hard capture to be complete. As we mentioned, it can take about 10 minutes. Confirmation, we are now on gyroscopes on the... Dragon End Station on the big loop, MCS configured, proceeding with hook driving. Dragon copies, good news. Dragon copies, thanks. Good news indeed. MCS, the motion control system configuration is complete. We have now moved to those gyroscopes instead of Russian thrusters, meaning the hard capture sequence has begun. are currently driving into place to give us that hard capture. Once we do have that hard capture, though, it will take some time uh, before we can open the hatches. Uh, they will perform some leak checks to make sure that it is safe to open both the A-pass hatch and the Dragon hatch. That could take up to about an hour after hard capture is complete. We were initially discussing, it uh, looked like we might have an 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific time docking, and we did have that contact and capture coming at 8.01 p.m. Pacific time, so very close, and that was even with uh, us holding for a little bit to allow the crew some better visibility. Hard capture sequence now underway, and we're standing by for that confirmation. I know the astronauts have to be loving looking at all of this data. <laughs> Tons of excitement. I know they've enjoyed their ride in Crew Dragon. They were having so much fun during the broadcast, <laughs> but I can only imagine their excitement to be at the International Space Station now. Now they're right there. Hard capture coming to a closure in a few minutes. 
Then they'll be able to start getting out of their suits again uh, that they put on just for this approach period. We've got confirmation that the first six hooks are complete and closed. Let me know if you're go for one decimal four zero three monitoring tools tear down. Houston copies Kate will be ready shortly. We'll let you know. As I was mentioning, those first six hooks are now complete and closed. The next six are on their way to complete this hard capture. The crew patiently waiting and watching and monitoring on their three display panels there. We also heard from Kate Rubens on the station side asking if uh, it was time for her to deconstruct her monitoring system where she's been watching the approach. Ground teams will let, their, let her know whenever they're ready for that. Again, hard capture is underway. Once hard capture is complete, they will perform some leak checks prior to opening up the A-pass hatch. Once the A-pass hatch is open, they'll perform uh, some more checks to make sure that it is okay to open the Dragon hatch. And in the meantime, Dragon SpaceX hard capture complete. Dragon copy. And there we heard the confirmation that hard capture is complete. Dragon is officially attached to the International Space Station <laughs> after arriving at 8.01 p.m. Pacific Time, 11.01 p.m. Eastern Time. 27 and a half journey to station since launch yesterday at 7.27 p.m. Eastern Time. How exciting, the crew must be so excited now that they're going to start doing uh, the process of doing leak checks uh, before they open those the those hatches, but they'll start uh, taking off their suits and getting ready to enter uh, the space station. Station Houston on two, you are go for tool teardown. Happy go, thanks. That's the call Kate Rubens was looking for. She is good to tear down her station. She was monitoring the arrival of Crew Dragon. And things will be picking up inside the space station for her. She's getting the hatch on the station side ready to be opened. She'll also start pressurizing that area known as the vestibule between Dragon and the station hatches. And we are waiting for the umbilicals to connect Crew Dragon to the International Space Station. This will allow Crew Dragon to use the space station's power, audio, and data connections. Resilience SpaceX, docking sequence is complete. Welcome to the ISS, Resilience. Hey, 
and SpaceX, this is Resilience. Excellent job right down the center. SpaceX and NASA, congratulations. This is a new era of operational flights to the International Space Station from the Florida coast. And ISS, Sergey, Sergey, and Kate, we'll see you real soon. え、日本の皆様、クルーズドラゴン運用初号機無事にアイセスの これから半年間の宇宙滞在も皆さんと感動を分かち合いましょう。All for one, crew one for all. Station, welcome to the ISS. We can't wait to have you on board. Spectacular job, Resilience. On behalf of all the flight controllers around the world, welcome aboard as we embark on seven-person crew operations and more milestones ahead for the station. And with that, ground will be enabling hardline power and comm connection shortly. You are go to doff your suits per procedure for decimal zero one two. We will configure video to go external momentarily and we'll let you know when it's ready. Okay, SpaceX uh, and out from Dragon Week copy, 4.012, and standing by for the cameras. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop, cameras are external. And Dragon copies, 4.012, suit docking inward. Heard some clapping here in Hawthorne at SpaceX headquarters and even saw a little bit of celebration aboard Crew Dragon. Once it was confirmed, hard capture was complete. Dragon was attached to the International Space Station. And then an amazing reminder just how important it is and how international the International Space Station is. Uh, words from Suichi Noguchi, the first international partner to fly aboard a commercial crew vehicle from the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency. What an amazing, amazing journey this has been. I can't believe that they are there now, officially docked to the space station. So excited to, to see them uh, get out of their suits and eventually get on station. But now that Dragon has completed the docking sequence, the spacecraft must undergo a handful of checks before we will be able to open the hatch. The crew on board Dragon will now get a chance to get out of their suits before moving into the hatch operations, which is why they're getting some privacy on uh, Dragon right now. Yeah, that's right. We heard that call for external cameras. And as we also heard, Kate Rubin's got the go to take down the station she was monitoring. Uh, the Crew Dragon arrival from, and she is also getting things ready on the station side to welcome her new crewmates aboard. She's uh, going to be getting the hatch ready to be open on the station side. That's the Node 2 hatch. And uh, then pressurizing that area known as the vestibule between Dragon and the station hatches. And the station hatch that we're looking at uh, for that vestibule area is the A-pass hatch. We had a great view of that as Crew Dragon was flying in. We also saw that little docking target um, for which Crew Dragon was able to align. And Kate Rubens will pressurize that hatch. We'll have a thermal stabilization period as well. And this means uh, we will pause for a while as we begin uh, to do leak checks. We want to make sure that there's no fluctuation in temperature that can make it look like there's a fluctuation in pressure. So we'll be pausing for about 30 minutes for that. And once it evens out, Kate Rubens will open up that hatch. She'll remove the docking target. Uh, and then it'll be a short matter of time before we see our Crew Dragon crew enter their new home aboard the International Space Station. Very exciting. So let's go to Brandy Dean for a refresher on what's ahead now that Dragon is docked. 
Yeah, it is so great to see a dragon there docked on the end of the Harmony node and uh, ready for for uh, the new new uh, joint expedition to begin. Um, what better way to celebrate 20 years of continuous human presence in space than by adding a seventh crew member to the long duration crew on board the space station, allowing them to do more work and more science. Um, but before dragon, we do get to that, we do have to get them on the other side of the hatch, and that is what is um, ahead of us for tonight now at this point. Uh, that is still a little ways off because it does take a little bit of time to get all these hatches open. There's more than one, in fact. Uh, when Kate Rubens gets the go from the team here on the ground, she will be doing a short check of the pressurization inside the pressurized mating adapter. That is the tunnel that basically connects now the uh, Harmony node to the Dragon. Um, assuming that looks good, and it should only take a minute or so, um, that will be opened, and then she can start uh, the next step, which will take a little longer. The small area between the hatch on the space station and the Dragon has been exposed to the vacuum of space until now, so it needs to be filled with air, and that takes a little while. Um, Kate Rubens will be working on that uh, for, for the next hour and a half or so, um, but after that, we will be able to see all the crew members together for the first time, which we were really looking forward to. But we'll keep following along in the meantime, and for now, I'll pass it back to you guys in Hawthorne. Thanks. Thanks, Brandy. So exciting. We're getting very, very close. It's been such an amazing journey uh, since launch yesterday at 7.27 p.m. Eastern Time. We watched them from the beginning, from them suiting up, making their way to the pad, uh, uh, riding the uh, fixed service structure, uh, ingressing on Dragon, uh, getting into their seats, getting strapped in, lift off at 7.27 p.m. Eastern Time uh, with a safe ride from Falcon, uh, separating Dragon into orbit. It's an absolutely amazing <laughs> journey. <laughs> it's it's That's the only word I can think of right now. And <laughs> right. 27 and a half hours later, it almost doesn't even feel like that long. So I hope that they've had a good ride in Dragon. It was amazing to see Crew Dragon earlier, that they were able to take us inside, give us a little bit of a tour. Um, and then it had those five major burns. You know, we had one last night. The crew got some sleep. And uh, we had the rest today. We also added in a few additional maneuvers in there, or I should say the Dragon computer added those maneuvers in there just to keep us on the right trajectory. And obviously it did a great job. Crew Dragon arrived at the International Space Station at 8.01 p.m. Pacific time, 11.01 p.m. Eastern time. And this view coming from inside the International Space Station, looking at the Node 2 hatch, this is what Kate Rubens will open shortly and then begin pressurizing the vestibule, that area between those two hatches that Brandy Dean was telling us about. And this is so exciting. It's been a long journey, but so worth it. They made it to the station safely. Can't wait for them to get through these next few processes, do the leak checks and make sure everything is safe to open those hatches and then watch as the crew members, the Crew One crew members board the International Space Station. And it looks quiet in there right now and empty, but in uh, just over an hour and a half, maybe we will see probably seven people crammed into this <laughs> small space, hugging and welcoming each other to the International Space Station. We're keeping an eye on Crew Dragon and on the International Space Station as they continue this, uh, these checks. Crew Dragon crew members will begin doffing their suits here soon. Kate Rubens will get to work on the station side, opening this hatch, conducting leak checks, pressurizing the vestibule, and eventually welcoming our crew members on board. We will have a welcome ceremony, so stay tuned with us. We will stay live. Yes, and we will definitely stay live as we move through all of these checks. We'll keep you updated as they progress, and uh, you'll get to watch the crew members float through 
<laughs> making their home on the International Space Station for the next six months. Dragon SpaceX on the Big Loop, ISS power connection is established. Dragon copy is good news. Station Houston on space to ground two for ingress part one. Copy, I'm just waiting on your go. And you are go in both steps 1.1 and 2.2. .2. We go in 1.1 and 2.2 .2 in work.
that is Kate Rubens aboard the International Space Station stepping through the procedures to bring Crew Dragon on board. And the hatch she just opened obviously is on the station side of Node 2. That is the pressurized mating adapter hatch. She's got uh, several, several more steps on her side to go. Meanwhile, the crew aboard Crew Dragon will be doffing their suits or taking them off, drying and stowing them. They'll also be stowing any of the equipment that they used. Sensation on space to ground two. The node two forward hatch is open and the MPEF is uncapped in step one decimal two and one decimal three. There was no delta P drop. Copy all. And that was Kate just confirming that that hatch is now open. And she is speaking with the CAPCOM in Mission Control Houston. The CAPCOM stands for Capsule Communicator. Uh, that's a term from back in the days when we were just flying capsules. And then of course we moved to the space shuttle program, not necessarily a capsule. And here we are in a capsule again. However, CAPCOM is the person that speaks with the astronauts aboard the International Space Station. They relay everything that's happening on the ground to the crew members. This keeps them from getting too much information coming from too many different directions. You see Kate Rubens ingressing the pressurized mating adapter. She'll also need to conduct, um, she'll need to pressurize the vestibule. That's the next hatch. That's the space between Crew Dragon and the International Space Station, that vestibule area. And the A-pass hatch was what was exposed to the vacuum of space prior to Crew Dragon's arrival. So we want to make that the same pressure as what's inside Crew Dragon and the space station. Looks pretty easy to get around in the space station. <laughs> See her gliding around as she's grabbing some of her tools. Kate will begin opening a valve on the APAS hatch to slowly let air in, pausing along the way. And we'll also do a thermal stabilization, making sure that the temperature isn't changing in that vestibule area, giving us signals that are uh, that are changing when it comes to uh, the pressure we want to see inside. So we'll end up pausing for about 30 minutes to make sure that is leveled out. Eventually, Kate Rubens will open up the A-pass hatch remove the docking target that we saw as Crew Dragon was flying in. That's what the vehicle uses to align with the International Space Station. She will stow that docking target. And then it'll be time for our crew, aboard Crew Dragon, to ingress the space station. What a cool view we are getting here from the space station looking out at Dragon attached to that Node 2 port. It's also a good view of the trunk of Dragon, and you can see those solar arrays, or they're not really arrays, they're solar cells and they're wrapped around the body of Dragon. That's the. Space to ground two in step two, decimal four at 0438. A pass equalization valve was closed after 75 seconds of open. Copy all, Kate. We see good vestibule pressurization. And I would put a warning there, uh, or at least a note for the crew about how loud that was. We copy, Kate. Didn't sound like 
like that in training in Houston. <laughs> We'll have to uh, beef up our simulators. <laughs> yeah, suck some air out of the room. <laughs> Kate Rubens is talking with our Capcom, Megan Levins, who is a trainer. Uh, she was saying that letting that air into the vestibule was a little bit louder than she expected <laughs> it to be. But she did let in 75 seconds of air, beginning to pressurize the vestibule, that space between the A-pass hatch on the station and the Crew Dragon hatch. As we were discussing, though, you can see those solar cells uh, on the top half of Dragon on the trunk. That's the black section. It's allowed Dragon to gather energy from the sun on its journey to the International Space Station. Meanwhile, on the bottom half of the trunk, the, the white side is a thermal radiator. It can help keep Dragon cool. However, Crew Dragon now being attached to the International Space Station is running on space station power rather than any power of its own. And as we're getting ready for these hatches uh, to be open, uh, Dragon will actually use sensors uh, on board Dragon to check the pressure inside of the vestibule before we open up that Dragon hatch. This all comes again after Crew Dragon's contact with the International Space Station happening tonight at 8.01 p.m. Pacific time. Dragon Houston on Space to Ground 2. We will be transitioning audio, so you will be down calm for just a few minutes. Yeah, Dragon copy. The Houston team letting Crew Dragon crew know they're reconfiguring uh, to different audio configurations and they'll regain communications with them shortly. Uh, as we saw earlier, the crew asked that the cameras inside be made external so we wouldn't get any interior views of Crew Dragon. That's because they will be doffing their suits, getting back into those comfortable clothes preparing to ingress or enter the International Space Station once all of this pressurization of the vestibule and leak checks are complete. And SpaceX is the Dragon on Dragon and Ground. We still got you. Hey, just want to give you a heads up. Uh, five Alpha, Decimal Five, Suit Dragon is started for all four suits. Okay, copy that, uh, four decimal, uh, 400, one through three and more. So it sounds like the crew is out of their suits now and they are now drying those suits. And if you are just now joining us, Dragon is now hard captured to the International Space Station. Kate Rubens is helping to get the vestibule ready and to the um, and and prepared for hatch opening. We also saw Kate Rubens 
Uh, getting that ready on the station side, she's already opened the pressurized mating adapter hatch. That's the hatch on the station side of node two. And what you could see on your screen is mission control here in Hawthorne, California. They are getting together, they just got together for a group photo in celebration of this amazing Crew-1 mission. A lot of hard work put into this mission. So definitely want to capture that moment. <laughs> Absolutely. And right back to their stations they go, still monitoring <laughs> the vehicle. It has been 27 and a half hours, maybe actually a little bit longer now. Of course, uh, the teams rotate out every eight or nine hours to keep them fresh. But uh, a lot of work put in on both the NASA and SpaceX sides to make this happen today, bringing the first uh, long duration crew to the International Space Station. And so exciting. Um, very close for the crew to enter station. We're just getting prepared, making sure that uh, the hatch, uh, the leak checks are complete before we open up the hatches and let the crew on board. Crew's already out of their suits. They're getting comfortable um, and getting ready to board the International Sta uh, Space Station. We'll also be uh, anticipating a welcome ceremony later tonight for the crew once they ingress the International Space Station. We'll get to watch them greet all of their colleagues currently aboard, and then we will see them speak with the ground for a little while as well. We've talked about a lot of firsts on this mission. Uh, as we mentioned, this is the first four-person capsule space flight ever, and it will also become the longest flight of a crewed U.S. capsule. The previous record was Skylab 4, and that was in 1973. It lasted for 84 days. Wow, that's a pretty long journey. <laughs> right now on your screen, if you're just now joining us, you are looking at a live view of Dragon docked to the International Space Station. The crew still inside Dragon, preparing for hatch opening. Uh, they're out of their suits now, getting into some more comfortable clothes. Uh, their suits are currently drying. And depending on how long these processes take for uh, the leak checks and pressurization of the vestibule, uh, the crew will be boarding uh, shortly and will be having a welcome ceremony. Yeah, and this all comes after soft capture of the Crew Dragon vehicle happened at 8.01 p.m. Pacific time tonight, 11.01 p.m. Eastern time. Crew Dragon and the International Space Station flying 262 statute miles over Idaho. Station Space to Ground 2, three different folders of Dragon Approach photos are available for you on SSC 8. Copy all, Kate. Okay. We'll take a look at SSC 8. Look forward to looking at those photos. I think there's some pretty nice ones there. You guys are going to like it. It is known objectively to be a very good looking vehicle. Absolutely concur. 
Walker. Station on Space Ground 2, are you okay with the Node 2 high def or standard def cameras for the setup for ISIS experience record? I'll do it in front of the cameras, that way we don't have to change the view that we've gotten prepped for PAO setup. And we're checking, standby. Again, 4.400. 